the girls then. <laughs> I think we're on. Are we on? Okay, we're live now. Hello and welcome to Tech Chat. It is Tuesday night and we are live streaming. I am getting into the chat. I'm Michelle from Unicorn and Centaur. I'm Adriana from Unicorn. <laughs> and tonight is Tech Chat, which is an equestrian hangout where we drink wine and clean our tack and chat about the topic of the day, which tonight is, uh, we're talking about horseback riding lessons. Let's see, oh, Granius is here, Taylor, Joanna, the virtual zookeeper, hey, hey, hey. So if you're in the chat tonight, do you currently take horseback riding lessons or have you in the past, like give us your story, um, have you ever, or is it like something like, hey, I would love to do that and I never have and da, da, da. Okay, I feel like we're like, Hang on, let's bring this closer. What? <laughs> oh, <Look> right. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're here. That's why. Okay. Yes. I've got to good. get my wine. Um, Adriana is drinking water tonight, but I am drinking wine from my hand painted uh, wine glass that Adriana made. There is a link in the description box if you need to have your own hand painted. Um, wine glass or other kind of glass. You can do. I mean, you don't have to drink wine out of it. You know, I don't know you. You live your life. I did shot glasses. I've done tank glasses, martini glasses. There you go. I'm gonna use the little knife thing today, so you don't make fun of me. <laughs> I'm opening the wine today. I'm, we're back to the oak leaf. Scott went and got me some of the oak leaf Pinot Grigio. Um, that is the Walmart. Uh, wine that I like to get because it is the cheapest wine that I have ever experienced my entire life that didn't taste like really bad salad vinegar. So I'm going to have myself a glass. All right. As for lessons, I started lessons when I was four. Um, but like the first two years, until I was six, it was pretty much like every once in a while, my dad would pay someone to let me get up on the horse and talk to me about what I was supposed to do. Yeah. Like, I guess serious lessons started when I was six, but like an actual lesson. My first lesson was when I was four years old. I remember it, but like vaguely. Okay. I didn't start lessons until I was 10 or 11. Um, and I was always interested, like I took pony rides at, at the Ren Fair and I did pony rides at wherever there were ponies. I think it would have mutinied if my parents made me wait that long. <laughs> well, I, I started because I, I went to, I don't know if I've told this story on, on I feel like we've talked about our first lessons yeah. or something before, but I mean, we've been doing this for a little while now, so. Um, you know, my mom took me by one of her coworkers' houses. And she had she had just gotten this new horse. She's an Appaloosa, e seven year old, really well trained, beautiful, like push button leopard app named Lottie. Mm -hmm. And uh, they threw me up there and asked if I liked it after walking around for a little while. And I said, I don't know. I mean, I didn't. Some I time remember this. Yes, yes. <laughs> you didn't want to say yes because you thought they were going to make you get yeah. down. That's adorable. And I remember that now. My mom made me wait till the end of the school year because it was my reward for getting good grades. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Like I had lessons on Saturdays, and that was like I had to be good all week because if I messed up, if I hit my sister, or if I <laughs> got in a fight, or if I broke something of hers, or didn't do my homework, or didn't do something I was told to do. Like that was it more than the threat of a spanking more than the threat of Jesus not loving me yeah. more than the threat of eternal hell was that Saturday lesson being taken away yep. from me. Yeah. <laughs> like you might as well kill me. I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Granios did trail. Yes. This, these are all things that do require cleaning. Okay. Um, let, oh, I have, I want to try. Um, I knitted these. It's 100% cotton. Um, yarn that I had extra just flying around so I wanted to make cleaning cloths oh I'm gonna use one on my wish boots which I have to show off my wish <laughs> okay so hang on wait oh is that the only one I have right now I made three of them there's, there's, there's another one. okay so there's one for yes. you if you would like to try it out sure, I'll try it out and is that gonna be amazing or is it gonna be something that you like make fun of me like the olive oil <laughs> 
I'll let you know when I'm done. <laughs> okay, okay. By the way, we're cleaning boots tonight, so we have rags of different textures um, for cleaning off dirt, because first you clean off all the dirt off something, and then you oil it and condition it, and then sometimes you will add a protectant layer over it. And ideally, you do this all the time, but I do it twice a month. <laughs> All right, I need my wine. What do you need? My water. Oh, hang on. Toast. Two horseback riding lessons. This is my favorite. Now song. I saw in the comments, Grinius was saying that he went on trail rides, uh, but never really had lessons. And I feel like a lot of people have done that um, because they're. <laughs> Did it it's make a noise? The battery's dying. It has a battery. You have a battery powered water bottle. It's got a speaker too. Is it gonna play I, Old Town Road? <laughs> it could if the battery were charged. <laughs> I love you. I had no idea this was a thing. Yes, it's, it reminds me to drink. Oh, well, that so, reminds me to drink. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So what were you saying? I was saying I think a lot of people start out. Um, a lot of people like if your if your parents were paying too much money on uh, on other activities or you didn't have the time in your schedule, you probably had the occasional trail ride or horseback ride, horse rental or whatever. Yeah, or you know, like summer. Does camp. it get Wi-Fi? Brandy just wants to know if your water bottle gets Wi-Fi. Uh, no, it's not Wi-Fi. It's Bluetooth. Bluetooth. Oh, I don't even know what that means. I don't even. I hear people say Bluetooth, and it sounds like an alien language to me. Like it's like. A thing. That it's you the connect. thing that goes in your ear, right? No. <laughs> Don't make fun of me in the comments, y'all. Please. <laughs> Marvel is starting gymnastics. Okay. Oh wait, Marvel. Does that mean you're not doing your lessons for a while? Are you taking a break from that? Or are you still doing um, lessons? I'm, I'm asking that. So we're waiting for that uh, answer to pop up. I need to clean something. I'm just in the chat right now. Um, Taken three in the, uh, Joanna says, I've taken three in the past. Joanna was highly electrified, so I stopped as, ugh. I'm starting English lessons this summer. Nice. Should we trust her for the night? Fun size equestrian drinking Dr. Pepper. That's awesome. I'm usually, I'm either drinking wine or diet Dr. Pepper. So, Bluetooth is a means of syncing devices with other devices. Okay, that makes sense. I still don't quite know it. <laughs> You know how you plug speakers into your computer? Yes. It's like that without yes. cords. Oh. It's cordless. Okay. So it does it via... So it's witchcraft. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I accept that. All right. I have to clean what so I'm going to clean first. Show me your wish boots. My wish boots. I'm going to... This is what's going to be the video on Sunday. So here we go. This, if you're in the chat right now, this is spoilers for Sunday's video. I bought... We all know, if we've been in the chats for a while, that my beloved Ariat Heritage boots um, have holes in them and they're falling apart and I can't really wear them all the time anymore. So I can't afford more Ariats right now. So I went on the Wish app and found these for $18. Now they're not, like they have an inside zipper. So it, when I ride, I have to wear half chaps over them. And they've got these stupid buckles on the back that don't do anything. And there's like a little, there's a little pocket here on the side. It's an actual pocket. You can it keep is. Things in it. What are you keeping in it? Um, well, I actually wear these um, when I'm doing carriage chores, and I put my ID in there so I don't have to bring oh, my wallet. Oh, nice. So my, I got my ID in my ankle. So if I turn up dead on a square somewhere downtown Savannah, um, tell them, and they can't identify my body, be like, look at her boot. <laughs> so, but these are not actual leather. Feel them. Don't cringe. <laughs> Don't say, oh, honey. <laughs> you know, they're really bad. They don't even feel like anything. And the, if you can, like, be on them or be in them, like, the sole of them, it feels like a piece of plastic. Oh, like, no. you know, it's like your, your foot hit lands funny. I don't know. Oh. But I have to clean them off, and I don't clean them like leather. So, ooh, I've got, like, anyway. So those are going to be the first ones I'm going to work on with my... Cloth I made myself. I am you so can ridiculous. Take that over there because I'm not going to use the water. I'm I've not. got my spray. Oh, she's got her spray. Five <laughs> I have. I still have, that foam cleaner from Feebings is not my favorite. I can't with that. 
So I think I'm just going to take this wet cloth and just sort of wipe down my boots. I did buy the um, boot covers that went with it. What did you do? That wasn't the water bottle, was it? Nothing. Nothing. I'm fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. It's usually me. I should drink to that. I absolutely should drink to that. Okay, so I actually haven't had a lesson in, what, a year and a half? Two years? I'm kind of embarrassed um, because one of the questions we wanted to ask tonight was, oh, who needs horseback riding lessons? And, of course, the answer is everybody. Except um, for George Morris, maybe. I don't know. Well, you know what? When you get to a certain level, I feel like it's with any sport, like uh, martial art, that people have different styles yeah. and different ways of um, refining and honing their upper level work yeah. so that even the most upper level of trainers and riders can learn from each other. I don't know. That's just my thing. Like, it, I don't see it as a hierarchy from like the very worst writer to uh, all the way up to the top of the it's a line up to the best oh, no, writer. No. Um, so, I mean, looking at it that way, yes, everybody would benefit from lessons. Of course, our favorites are when people call and want to ride, and you're like, well, would you like a lesson? Oh, I don't need lessons. <laughs> you read my post the other day. <laughs> yes. Like, that's my favorite thing to hear is people go, oh, I don't need lessons. I was like, mm. that is the number one indication but to a do. horse person <laughs> that you do need lessons if you tell them you don't need lessons. It's it's a sure Jan moment. Sure Jan. <laughs> what is happening in the chat? All right. Must be really powerful wine. I don't know. I'm going to have to work on it a little while longer. Have to get on a draft due to my weight. I don't. Horses are beasts of burden. They can carry a lot. I guess though, for a beginner, if you're um, a balanced rider, can be heavier than an unbalanced rider. Um, does that make sense? If you're kind of wobbling all over the place and the horse has to compensate for your uh, lack of balance, it, um, he's going to have a harder time. Does that make sense? Am I making sense? Yes. Is this powerful wine? I've only had half the glass. All right, it's down here. Fun says equestrian says, I remember my first lesson because it was around my birthday aw, in November, and my dad booked it, took me to get riding boots, then went to the barn. Oh, that sounds so wholesome. Oh my gosh. I love it. There were no schedules in the 1970s. I know my first riding lesson was in, actually, the first time I was on a horse was in 1974. When you were negative what? <laughs> Negative nine. <laughs> and that was at those little pony rides that was at the base in the Philippines. So it was just like me sitting on a pony going in a circle over and over again. And I did that for a year and a half. So uh, I'm hoping they'll put me on that pretty sorrel quarter horse. Yes, please post pictures on Instagram. I love all y'all that are in the chat that I follow on Instagram. I love seeing your pictures. Um, are you following all the people? You need to follow all the people. I'm gonna I'm make us so, all. I'm terrible about Instagram because I get so lost in it. Like, well, I, I follow, don't. I follow a lot of people. Yes. Like, I'm like I just kind of see whatever scrolls through. But when you like something over, so I try to make sure like I like um, everybody's things on Instagram so that it'll continue showing me the pictures because I love yeah. seeing pictures of like people and their actual horses or their actual lives. What you're doing. That's my jam. Although I do love memes. Yeah. But, I don't know, people that post their real lives. That's my favorite. See, I put my dog uses her Instagram more than I do. Savannah Moon Moon Savannah loves Moon. Savannah Moon Moon. Yes. I forget to use my Instagram since so Granios. I try to post every day. For a while I was trying to do twice a day, but I could not keep up with that after just this year went a different, this year went a different direction than Unicorn and Centaur intended. <laughs> Horse in particular on my personal account is named Skip. Only horse with tack on my recent posts. Aw. I love it. What are your eyebrows doing? Wonderful things. Okay, so I have one of my wish boots done. And they're already, like, one of the soles is already starting to, like, peel away. I've only gotten them wet once. Oh, God. And not even soaked. Just, like, you know, splashed with water. And so they immediately started dying. 
like a Yankee downtown Savannah on an August afternoon. Oh. <laughs> All right, I gotta do the other booth. Here we go. So lessons, but that, how do you find a trainer? Cause it can be hard. People always want to know, like, um, I, I feel like sometimes finding the right writing instructor can be like finding a therapist. Oh yes. Like you can't just go to, it's not one size fits all. You can't just go to any barn or any facility. Um, you might have to try out some lessons first just to see if you like the horses, like the barn, like the instructor, um, you know? Yeah, and somebody who's really great for one person might be not great for the other. Right. I went, when I first, I've taken several breaks from horses over the years as an adult. And coming back from one of those breaks, I actually like had some money to invest. I was like, okay, I'm going to buy a helmet and boots and a pair of riding breeches. And then I'm going to spend this much money on lessons. And so I like bought a lesson package. Um and that was when I first went to Norwood, yeah. when Sue owned it there. Um, and that's kind of how I got back to it. And so at the end of the lessons, you can be like, okay, am I having a good time or am I panicking every time I come to the barn and I hate my life? Then you know if you need to look somewhere else. Even if you love where you are, you can always try another barn. Yeah, and that's, I mean, definitely when you went to Norwood, there weren't that many lesson barns around. Yeah. Um, Probably not. I'm trying to think. In Savannah, when I... So I found my unicorn. Everybody's got a unicorn instructor. Yeah. Like, my unicorn of instructor, uh, she lives in Aiken now, uh, Jennifer Helgren. I don't know if you ever... But I haven't her met her, but you have... Talk about her. So I feel like I know her because you have talked about her a lot. And Jennifer, if you ever watch this, it's all good. She is amazing. And she owned Silverthorn out on, in Fort Worth. Right. Um, you told me about that place. Yeah. So, okay. and she, like, I totally found her by accident. Mm -hmm. I was looking at a place, to, I was at SCAD, and I was really unhappy <laughs> at the barn. So, I was looking for a place to keep my horse, and I was uh, driving around and found it. And <clears throat> talked to her, and I was like, well, she seems sane. So, you know, I went there, and she was, like, magical. <laughs> But I tried another barn called Hot to Trot. You've been in Savannah for longer than I have. Hot to Trot. That was a movie in the 80s with Bobcat Goldthwait and a talking horse. Yeah. So, y'all, Grindios, if you, are you the only older person in the chat? Do you remember that movie? Did you ever see that? Y'all young people may be like, wait, what is she talking about? It was a talking horse movie. Did you see it? I, I never saw it. But I, was, I know what you're talking about. But it was this lady. You have to see how to try now. I'm sorry, I got distracted. And she um, she told me that if I board there, I had to take lessons with her. And I said, well, sure. And she was like, okay, I'm going to set up a lesson for you so you can see if you like it. So I went right. to the barn, which was like this tiny little weirdly shaped building and a ring that was like sideways. And I get there and she's nowhere to be found in this one-eyed man in a military outfit comes out and he's like, I'm Scotty. I'm going to be an instructor today. And <laughs> at the end of the lesson, I'm jumping like an oxer and he's like, oh, this horse has never jumped a vertical before. Oh my, oh my gosh. God. That is crazy. Needless to say, I did not board there. Oh my gosh. Brian is saying which movie? Um, I'm Francis de Mule's a little bit older than the one I was talking about. I was talking about Hot to Trot with the um, Bobcat Goldthwait and the talking horse. Um, virtual Zookeeper saying my lesson barn is Heroes on Horseback, which is a nonprofit hippotherapy facility. There's two therapy facilities here in the Savannah area, and they're both fantastic. Um, as a volunteer, I have reduced rates. Yes, that is one option um, if you're having trouble affording lessons. Um, another thing is after you paid for lessons, what happened to me at Norwood, um, that's how I ended up getting a job. I paid for my lessons and through going there in my paid lessons and showing them that I could listen and follow instructions, I could safely handle all the horses and I knew what I was doing and had um, a calm demeanor and was you know, if I knew what I was doing. So after the, 
my lessons, I told her, she asked if she, I wanted to schedule more. And I said, I really would love to, but it's no longer in my budget. I will let you know when it is. And that's when she offered me a job working there. <laughs> so I could work um, on the weekends and do stalls and um, waters and things like that and feed and then ride all the horses I wanted. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so um, yeah, there are ways um, to find, when you find the right place, place, when you find the right place, there are ways to become part of the barn family for sure. Yeah. Working student positions are always good. But you can't just show up to a barn yeah. and be like, I know about horses. Can you give me a job? I know every now and again, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there'll be like, there'll be something like posted on Facebook, uh, you know, somebody's looking for a, um, a working student and yeah. they can, they get, it's certain so many days a week they get a lesson they get you know partial board for a horse right a lot of times that's more experienced like right you know, for more experienced riders but yeah it's um you can learn a lot more it's a lot more exhausting and it takes a lot more time um to be a working student but you also learn and experience and practice more than you do just paying for lessons and just coming and riding your horse and leaving. Yeah. So I would say like, no matter where you are, no matter what kind of lessons you're taking, always volunteer to help. Always volunteer to stay later and help, you know, carry out poop buckets or turn horses out or mix up feed, you know, or yeah. fill water buckets. Everybody hates filling water buckets. And if you're not at a barn with automatic waterers, somebody wants you to fill the water. That's just a fact. Love our automatic waterers. Hmm. John Candy did the voice in Hot to Trot. I don't remember that. All right, P. John Candy. Oh, it was so great. Fun size a question. Okay, anyone who has heard of Hot to Trot and not seen it, you have to go see it, but be warned. It really is not a great movie. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, how many great horse movies are there? A handful, really. I Most of them are like, wah, wah. Yeah. Like, it's the same cheesy stuff every time. This is a whole different topic, by the yeah. way. <laughs> Girl falls in love with horse. Dad says, no, you can't cap horse. Or right. horse can't I'll do show that. you. I'll show you. Then no. she wins the race on the horse or yeah. whatever it is. <laughs> wins the race competition, whatever. Black Beauty. Yes, Black Beauty. There have been so many versions of Black Beauty. Um, I remember, do you remember the TV show? I don't know Maybe. if you're, yes. See, I think you're too young. Like back in the early 80s or the late 70s on Nickelodeon, there was a TV show, Black Beauty. And it was one where they'd be like, the humans are having a, a, a scene, and then Black Beauty is just, they, they make a whinny noise happen off screen, like Black Beauty's talking to them or whatever. But there were like all these awful horse sound effects throughout the whole thing that I didn't notice at the time, but looking back at it, I'm like, oh my God, that's awful. Was it a live, like a live? Yes. And it was Black Beauty, not Black Stallion? No, not the Black okay. Stallion, it was Black Beauty. And it was a British TV series. Oh. Vicki Bowker was one of the, was the main actress, and she was the same actress who played Andromeda in the old Clash of the Titans movie. Please tell me you've seen Clash of the Titans. Oh my God, we have to change the topic of this tech chat immediately. <laughs> and I need support. Why? You haven't seen the old Clash of the Titans with Harry Hamlin and all the really bad stop motion so, claymation. Oh my God. So here's the thing. I watched like basically musicals growing up. I watched Willy Wonka a whole lot, and I watched Rocky Horror a whole lot, and like, <laughs> that's it. No! Okay. Oh my gosh, alright. Okay, War Horse was really good. Okay, I have not seen that one, despite my background as a puppeteer and an equestrian. Oh, I have seen videos of the puppet and it has blown my mind and it kind of has made me not want to see the movie because if the movie is not as good as that one clip of that amazing horse puppet, I'm going to be sad. Does that even make any sense? I don't make sense, do I? See, Grineo still hasn't um, seen more horse either, so there you go. I mean, good that's, that's what spurred the... Release the Kraken, right? Okay. I've got to get to my other pair of boots. There's uh, my other boot down here as well. Okay, my Ariats. I need to save up for another pair of Ariats. Um, even though, I don't know. 
Maybe I need to like, I don't, don't they have like really fancy ones? Doesn't Ariat have like fancy weird kind of boots that like you never could wear to a show or something, but they're, they're extra. I'm looking something, I'm looking for something that is like not the traditional regular riding boot. Yeah. But also is an actual riding boot because the soles of those are crap for being in stirrups. You know, and the leather is already, the leather is already falling apart. I, uh, I don't know. I'll have to look online. I need to find a good pair of, like, muck shoes, like, not muck shoes, but shoes mm. that I can wear at the barn, like. What about, like, Crocs? <laughs> I'm honestly kind of that. I've right? got a pair of Crocs right here. They're but... comfy and you just, like, slide them on. I but know. I need like men's because I are they one size? what now are they like one size are they I don't know there you can I mean, buy you individual can buy sizes, sizes yes. but like are they unisex <laughs> I don't know I don't own a pair like, of cracks I've just got I've got really wide feet hey Zadel's here hey I'm not gonna wear Roman sandals to work Durango oh that's a boot brand right I don't do they make is it a riding boot brand or just a, like a boot brand. Because, like, I was trying, the reason I bought the Wish Boots is because I thought they looked, like, extra. They looked cool. And I, I wanted to look cool. So where did the, can, can you show me the picture that, <laughs> on the Wish app, <laughs> of what they were supposed to look like? Because those don't look cool to you. I'm not going to. That's not my This bag. is not the finger I want to use right now. <laughs> How dare you, ma'am? I'm gonna cry. Wait. <laughs> Ten points from the door. You nerd. Yes. Oh, they have both. I think I'll have to look that up, Taylor. But I also have to save the money first because, yeah, I don't have extra. I got sick and couldn't work last week, so I'm like missing a week of money. So the Ariat boots might have to be a midsummer purchase. My birthday's coming up in August. I don't know if the wish boots will last till August. <laughs> I just want to know what they look like. <laughs> Maybe I will. You know, when I do the video for Sunday, I will post a picture of what okay. they looked like. But I mean, come on. Don't those look kind of cool? They, got the little... they do. Yeah. And um, they look a lot better. Like, they look oh, really you. good on the screen. From far away. Yeah. How dare you? <laughs> they look like docs almost, right? right. You know? Or but then grinders. when you see them up close and you touch them, you're like, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I need to get an oil rag and oil some boots. That's what I need to do. Well, my, I like the way the Ariats are shaped. I like the way they make my foot look. I just want something besides, I don't know. I like half chaps. And I'm thinking of, okay, here's spoiler alert for y'all in the chat who like to join the crafting um the crafting live stream, I want to learn how to make uh, half chaps. Yeah. So that you, I can make them where, you know, they zip up and it looks like flames or dragon scales or mermaid fins or yeah. something coming off of them. You zip them up and it looks like that. So then you have your plain padded boots and you have a, I really mm. want to figure that out. So maybe on one of the crafting yeah. live streams, we'll have to do that. Sound off in the chat. If what I just said, if you understood what I was saying and you were like, yes, please, we need to figure out. Because I don't know if I need an industrial sewing machine for that or if it's mm. something that. I don't because if they, they, they can't be material. too. Right. They can't be too loose because they'll move around too much. Yeah. And if they're too tight, if the material's not sturdy enough, it's going to fall apart. Yeah. So this, it may be like trial and error. It's here. To the end of the year. Oh, hey, Brittany. I bet Brittany would wear a pair of extra um, half chaps. Pinstripe half chaps, cute, Ooh. yes. All I have now is cowboy boots and hiking boots for work, army boots. Now see, the thing, like army boots are great. I used to actually have, my, my dad was military. Can I finish the sentence? My dad was military, so I was a military brat, and I grew up wearing, like, literal combat boots, not, like, mm -hmm. fake combat boots you'd get at the store or whatever, but, like, literal, actual combat boots. Um, and the soles that are on most of the combat boots are not as safe as um, riding boots for riding. 
uh, at least for England. I'm not sure about Western because a lot of people ride in sneakers. In, in Western saddles? In every, like I see people uh, just casually riding online or whatever. Like you would not wear sneakers to a riding lesson. Your instructor would die and then actually would kill you and then would die. And take away your stirrups. Yes, there you go. But the rubber soles are a little bit like the tread that makes it sticky. That The reason you want it for walking to keep from, you know, wiping out and slipping is the same reason you don't want it in a stirrup. In the stirrup, you want your feet to slip out of it so that you don't get caught in there. Isn't that the idea? Yeah. Basically. Okay. My everyday shoes are high top hemp shoes. That sounds awesome. I like that. Britt says, sorry, having a PMS moment with my mom. Girl, that's relatable. <laughs> says our <Arjur. laughs> I need new tall boots. My muscles is destroying me. I just can't. Uh, tall boots. I'd rather do paddock boots and half chaps. Now, I don't show, though. Yeah. I'm not a horse show person. I, one day I'm going to have to get another pair of tall boots. I've got, I've got a pair and I just, I have not tried to put them on in a long time because I know my legs are going to be too big. Oh, I hate that. Yes. That's why my, the, my pirate boots down there, my Dublin edge boots or river's edge, no edge yeah. boots or something like that. Um, they're so tight around the calves that now the lining has ripped out when I push my feet down oh, in it. No. And I was like, I hate yes. That. So I haven't been wearing those. That's why I haven't been wearing those. Oh my God. I'm about to see these. Wait, everyone wait. I think I'll get a different rag for doing oil. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> All right. So yes, lessons. Everybody needs them. Y'all, even Olympic athletes have trainers. I think it's that good. Yes. How do you think pe the people who win horse shows and win um horse races how do you think they got that good they took actual lessons now every once in a while you'll see a story of someone who you know their father bought them a mustang and they never had a lesson and just get on bareback with shorts on and no tack and you know they have a bond but that does not happen every day That's, and it does in the horse movies it does in the horse movies and i'm pretty sure most of that is like manufactured for drama and clickbait anyway yeah i said it i said it Okay. Fun size equestrian. I've yet to own a pair of tall boots. Yeah, I just, I have really large calves. They're like 16 and a half inches. And so it's hard to find um, tall boots that go over them. I tell people, I don't have calves, I have cows. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have my, my tall boots since I'm so tall. My Tall boots that actually fit me were like semi custom, which. <laughs> if you are going to take lessons, if you're not already taking lessons, I guess, or if you are, if you don't already have a pair of actual riding boots, they really are a fantastic investment. And doing things, this is why we do tack chat, so you can regularly clean and oil your boots. Um, these are invest an investment into your equestrian habit, so to speak. Um, like having a helmet, ha um, having your own helmet and boots to me, that's like the baseline. That's what oh, I would yeah. tell when my students would come to do my centaur lessons. Um, I, cause I teach recreational riding to adult beginners. And when my students would come to me, that's what I would tell them. If you want to continue doing this beyond what I've taught you, you want to get your own helmet and you want to get your own pair of boots, like actual real legit riding boots, not something from Payless or Amazon or wish. <laughs> Right. But I really would recommend that. So that's like the basics. After that, like other kinds of riding equipment. So if you're taking Western riding lessons, get a pair of actual cowboy boots. You will discover that there are reasons that they are shaped the way they are and that they ride very comfortably when you have horseback riding lessons. Do you know how many pairs of cowboy boots I've had now? Do you know, okay, this is random side note, story time kids. One of my biggest regrets is giving my ex-husband back his dead grandfather's cowboy boots. My ex-husband, like he was a Texan. I used to have a dead Texan's cowboy boots. They were black. 
cowboy boots. He had had like small feet for a dude. Cause I have big feet for a woman and he had small feet for a dude. And so when my husband and I got divorced, I gave him his grandfather's boots back because I felt like that was something I should do. But now I feel like I should have kept them. Yeah, you they kept looked them. really cool on me. And yeah. I would have still had Papa's cowboy boots. They were your boots. <laughs> and they looked really good. Anyway, so I gave this back. I gave Papa's boots back to my ex-husband when we got divorced. I can't stand pointy shoes, boots. Yes, that's what I loved about Papa's cowboy boots is that they weren't that sharp toe pointy. They actually looked a little bit rounded and looked kind of cool. They were black. They had a little bit of top stitching on them. So they were like perfect. And I'm an idiot. Officially. Nothing beats a good pair of riding boots. You got that right. And I don't have that right now. I've got my edge boots that have the lining ripped out, my Ariat boots with the holes in them, and my wish boots that we're all just going to bless their hearts. Endurance boots. Are endurance boots different? Oh, I don't. Because honestly, that's my secret dream. I mean, I have an Arabian. <laughs> that's true. That's my secret dream is just to ride him for days. Oh. That just sounds amazing. Hmm. All right. Tall boots, Easy. better oh than grip, goodness. paddock boots. I heard tall boots has better grips than paddock boots. Is that true? Well, uh, I guess grip has to do with the inner calf, which would be either half chaps or the tall boot. Or full chaps. Excuse me. I don't feel like anybody wears full chaps anymore. That was a big thing when I started riding. Like... Everybody would wear paddock boots and full chaps. Wow. Like, That's for real. Not the fringy ones, just the plain. Why wouldn't you wear, if you're going to wear full chaps, why wouldn't you wear fringy ones? <gasps> so, oh, um, Joanna's saying they're like hiking boots with the heavy tread. Yeah, that heavy tread is not the safest for wearing in stirrups. And that's why, like, riding boots will have the smooth soles. Like, here, I'll show you the difference, actually. Hang on. I've got this is an Ariat boot, and you can see it's it is. I mean, I've had them for years, so it's worn smooth on the sole, but you can see that the sole doesn't have a lot of tread on it, and that it's pretty smooth. And it's made that way because when you put your foot, at least in English writing, when you put your foot in the stirrup, you kind of just want the ball of your foot or the toes on the stirrup so that, God forbid your horse goes crazy, you're not gonna get your foot jammed through the stirrup. And now here's the tread on the wish boots and we can see how it's more like, you know, it's got actual tread on it and it's meant for traction. So you actually don't want that in a stirrup. Your stirrups are not for balance and support really, are they? They're for, they're to help you, they're your helpers. But you don't rely on your helper. <laughs> so I do my stirrup July. <clears throat> yes, no stirrup November is a thing in most of the country, but down here where it gets really hot, we also do like no stirrup July because it's so hot in July. Nobody wants to do it. See, yeah, I prefer no stirrup July because horses are lazier. Oh, she's saying no, 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 without the tread. That's uh, better. That's better. Really need to get a pair of half chaps. I've worn my um, fun size equestrian is saying I've worn my previous for two years before the zipper stopped zipping properly. What brand do you have? Fun size equestrian. Um, let us know um, because I've had several pairs of Ariat half chaps, but I have not had other brands. And my experience with the Ariats is that the elastic underneath the boots is extremely durable and lasts a long time, and the zippers don't give out. Yeah, my Ariats, I've got. Well, I have Saxon. Three pairs. Hers were Saxon half okay. chaps. I've had Saxon boots before, and I remember like every boot I've had except Ariat has made me sad. Yeah, I, I think I've had Saxon boots as well. Yes, because see, I'm on, and I think because they, they were a little more expensive uh, or inexpensive. Yeah, they were more affordable, if I remember correctly. That brand, the Saxon brand, is that a Tough Rider brand? Ooh, I think they've been around since before Tough Rider. Okay, like they've been around since I was. Because Tough Rider Literally. stuff usually is not as durable. Like, it's yeah. much more affordable than most stuff, but it's not as durable. If we're talking less than a pair right here, in my experience. And every once in a while, there's a Tough Rider product that lasts forever, and I'm like, okay, Tough Rider, I see you. 
I feel like they've got decent breaches, don't they, Tough Riders? No? Are they not good? They do the thing in the middle where they like completely wear out oh. the middle. If you do not have a thigh gap, which like 1% of people do, <laughs> if your thighs touch at all, Tough Rider breeches will wear out right in that middle area. Almost immediately, they start peeling up. Oh, yeah. Sucks. And then, depending on the kind you get, I actually did. God, if I don't, I don't think I'll remember to go back and like link a video. But I did a compare. I did a Tough Rider brand review. Okay. Of a video on this site before, and I also did a review of some Tough Rider breeches, and almost all of them. But if you buy Tough Rider saddle pads, they'll last forever. Yeah. But breeches last two washes. So, the, which is why I avoid things like, I think they have boots too, where I'm like, I'm just not gonna with Tough Rider. I'm like, if anyone from Tough Rider is watching, I'm challenging you. Send me some products and let me test them because I ride quite a bit. I ride and I drive and I do a lot of stuff with horses and I can see if your products hold up to equestrian activities. Is that even word that way? Oh my God, I'm gonna get lost. <laughs> I'm so excited for lessons so I can get cute English gear. Can I just say that's what I grew up doing Western lessons. And then when I was 16, I switched to dressage and it was only because of the clothes. <laughs> did you want to shed belly? I did not. I just out. liked the breeches and the boots. Oh, okay. Something about the combination of breeches and boots. I've always loved it. And now of course that's all I wear anywhere. I wear it to the dollar store. I wear it grocery shopping. I would probably wear it to weddings and funerals. Funerals. I would probably wear it to weddings and funerals if people wouldn't gossip. So I don't use half shops when I'm in padded boots. No need. See, I get really bad raspberries on the inside of yeah. my legs if I don't wear half shops. Every to... time, like I'll be like, oh, I don't need it today. I'll be fine. And then no, I'm not fine. I used to ride in just padded boots. Like I didn't even have half shops mm -hmm. until I came to Savannah. And I ordered a pair, but like I used to ride in just paddock boots and breeches or jeans or whatever, and mm -hmm. my legs were fine. But now I can't do it. I have no like my leg feels loose. I get sores. It's That's bad. Cool. Yeah, I can't. I will rub like immediately. And the older you get, like the thinner your skin gets. <laughs> Y'all, young people don't have to worry about this yet. But so, but yes, I love the English gear. And you know, people in the extra equestrians group were asking about wild or extra or crazy breaches. And I was a little embarrassed that I don't have more room. Excuse me. Cause all I wear is black. Like yeah. everything else in my life is extra, but my wardrobe tops, bottoms, whatever, black, just totally, I'm not a fashion person. I feel like that. I mean, aside from, you know, easy, whatever. I feel like that reflects on your puppeting background. Probably. <laughs> and um, theater. Backstage theater, crew. Yeah. Like, if you're not in a costume on stage, then you're dressed all in black so you can do crew stuff. I mean, crew wears all black. But, yes, that's... My mother would always think it was because I was rebelling. And at this point in my life, I'm, like, 46 <laughs> years old. I'm like, Mother, what am I rebelling against? This is just what I'm comfortable wearing. Like, oh, my God. Can you not? Love sun shirts. I'm thinking brown. Hang on. Yes. Want a pair of maroon breeches. They have a whole bunch of, of cool kinds of breeches. I should, you know what I want to do? Okay. Here's what I really want to do. This is everybody in the chat. You're hearing this here first. I'm drunk. I want a line of breeches that double as sportswear. Like, so I can ride my horses and then go for a run and I don't have to, I can go for a run on the trails and I don't have to change clothes. So pretty much running tights with knee patches, hmm. right? Yeah, they'd have to be like really durable running tights. So right, so it would be running tights without a mid, an inner thigh seam yeah. and with knee patches that aren't like the silicone kind that would get sticky and yeah. weird, but just like a regular knee patch so that you could use it for whatever activity you're doing. Yeah. Hmm. That is my idea. That may be Unicorn and Centaur's thing coming up. Like <laughs> I'm gonna just, I'm going to design some running tight breeches, running tights, riding tights, running and riding. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> anyway, 
But yeah, I have running tights and I have riding breeches. And I like get annoyed changing between them. Because out at Chimney Field, the trails are beautiful. Yeah. Like it's gorgeous being back there in the woods. So after I ride, you know, I still, riding isn't a cardio workout. So afterwards, you might want to go for it. Is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Maybe if you're riding a chestnut mare, yes. <laughs> but you know, sometimes after maybe I want to go for a ride and then go for a run. I don't know. And I don't want to change my pants because it's hot in South Georgia. Yoga pants. Yes, but yoga pants don't have that um riding breeches, English riding breeches in any case, a lot of times have either full seats or inner thought or inner knee patches, which just give a little bit more friction and grip when you're in the saddle. I just went on Dover and breeches be over a hundred dollars. Never mind, we're sticking with blue jeans and cowboy boots. Oh, um, Joanna, go to Walmart.com. There, you can actually. Did you know you can order like brand name breeches from Walmart.com and they'll deliver it to the Walmart in your town, no shipping costs, and you go pick it up there. Wow. Like the cheap Tough Riders that come apart in two washings cost yeah. like nineteen dollars at the oh, Walmart. Okay. So if you need something that's like just because you have to go do a thing or, you know, yeah. if you're never going to wash them or use them. I'm trying to remember what website it is uh, that I used to get. Um, really, I, they always had riding breach. They, they've got a huge array of breaches and they always had sales. Good talk. Good story. Tell whatever came from Now, you know what, there. though? The riding, the exercise tights, the running tights slash riding tights that I want to create, I'd love to be able for them to be used by Western riders as well. Yeah. Um, Maybe know. different cuts. Maybe like, like a boot one, cut. Yeah, a boot cut for Western Make riders. Make a couple of boot cut. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, let's do this. Let's do this. But athletic wear, because when we're out at the barn, we're doing athletic things. We're, you know, it's not for the faint of heart. I heard that. Did everybody else hear Adriana's stomach growl just now? <laughs> I did not even oil my boots. It is almost eleven o'clock, and I have not ten forty-seven, and I haven't oiled oh, my it boots. It might be. It might be horse.com. Horse. Horse. H o r z e, not whore, but <laughs> horse. Dot com. Yes. I, I like it. Fun Size Equestrian. Smart Pack usually has a good range of riding breeches. Yes, Fun Size Equestrian. Um, however, Smart Pack sometimes has them a little more expensive, but they're the only ones that carry Pipers. I really like Pipers breeches. I like my Pipers. They've got another one that's a little bit higher rise. Okay. Which I'm like thinking about ordering next time I order a pair of breeches. I don't understand low rise breeches. You're sometimes you have to bend over. Sometimes well, you have to move. Like, I think pipers are not low low rise, but they're lower rise than the other ones. And I don't mm -hmm. like low rise things. Like when I was low skinny, rise breeches aren't good for middle aged ladies with fubas. <laughs> Even when I was skinny I didn't like low rise breeches. Mm -hmm. I'm not shaped right for them. I yeah, no. Okay. Hang on. Put my oh, I put my headphones back on just as it happened. What happened, Taylor? Uh oh, I missed it. Was it my stomach? Mm. Did you make breeches? Now, um, Buck Wild Breeches makes really cool, interesting kinds of breeches, like different wild prints and stuff. But they're a little more. They're not expensive, but they're not the cheap cheap either. It's like a hundred dollar breeches. Cheap, I think of as like twenty to fifty dollars. Yeah. And then like a mid price is like fifty to a hundred, and then a hundred to two hundred is like high end, and over two hundred is I get paid to ride horses. Yeah. <laughs> or I went to Rolex and found them on sale. Exactly. This weekend. Fun size is a question. Oh, I like Buckwild's breeches and their designs. See, if I didn't wear all black all the time, I would totally rock some Buckwild. I like the like jewel colors, like the solid jewel color yes. breeches with the contrast knee patches. Oh, and Lauren's here. Hi, Lauren. Oh my God, which got shot. Started watching Legacies. Brittany, what are you doing? <laughs> Taylor says the tummy growl. <laughs> That's because she's drinking water and not wine tonight. Sorry. Whatever. <laughs> 
I really need to oil my boots. I don't know what I'm doing. I've had like two glasses of wine. I'm not even focusing. Give me some mink oil, y'all. Here we go. Mink oil. And I'm going to oil my Ariat breeches. And I need some more Ariat breeches. I mean boots. I said breeches, but I meant boots. Y'all knew what I meant, didn't you? Breeches. I'm not going to oil my breeches. Y'all knew what I meant. No, I'm not drinking gin either. <laughs> I'm drinking water. Yeah, Adriana is actually, I'm drunk, but Adriana is literally fine. And I am oiling boots and she's making fun of me. I am not making fun of you. You liar, I can feel the energy coming off of you. <laughs> that's, not, that's because you're a Gryffindor and you gotta make it about you. Ten points to Gryffindor, <laughs> yes. Okay, for, so for all right. breaches. I think after this, I'm probably gonna get on uh, some sort of, I'm gonna get online and look for Ariat boots that are not just normal boots, but that are extra. I need some sort of crazy I used to boots. have some like fun ones with like trim, like bright red or bright blue trim. Right. Um, and they had half chaps to match. But I think they just don't oh, need no. them. Mm. I really like, I really liked, and I'm kind of butthurt that they uh, discontinued the the brown ones, the chocolate Ariats. Oh, yeah. Because like I was really into brown leather boots for a while. I am not into brown leather, but I am all about having choices and doing what's good for you and what you want. It's a brown helmet, too. So There you go, girl. I remember that brown helmet. Okay, I have oiled one boot. I'm going to oil the other. I'm going to finish my wine, though. What's happening in the chat? Um, Who's talking to us? Tell me all about it. Or all black the other day, right? Aww. And I love it. Brittany, you look good in blue, though. There's okay. a pair of leather breeches from Chorus. Leather, like entirely leather breeches. Like, that sounds like I would not survive a Savannah, a Savannah summer in some leather breeches, like full have you, on. Have leather you seen breeches. that episode of Friends? Ross wears the leather pants. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but it's been a long time. Leather pants. I'm just imagining Do you, you know? in the bathroom. <laughs> okay, I'm going to tell y'all a random story before we end here. This has nothing to do with horses, but this has to do with Michelle in 1984. In 1984, I was 12 years old. I was in seventh grade. And what was really popular in 1984 was black leather pants and those elf boots. Remember those suede boots with like the roll over top and the pointy toe? Like the fairy, yeah. Like elf boots, yeah. That was the big look was like leather pants and then the elf boots. And I wanted that so bad. And my mother told me, no, you may not have a pair of black leather pants. And I was like, I'm going to take my own money and go to the mall and buy it myself. And she was like, I've been, I'm going to take them from you and set them on fire. Like my mother was not, not even playing and I hated her. You don't understand. How dare you? You don't know anything old lady. Like what is your problem? And now though, thinking back on it as a 46 year old woman, a 12 year old little girl in black leather pants is not right. <laughs> like my mother was right. <laughs> To tell me no. <laughs> I'm trying to think. I was I was probably 15. My first pair of vinyl pants. Mm -mm, yeah. Oh, I was I was 12 and in seventh grade. I remember one of my friends had a pair of leather pants, and I can't even remember her name now. But she had a pair of leather pants, and I was so jealous of her. And I knew what stores at the mall sold them. My mom just didn't want me to be cool. So rude. I had a pair of leather pants in high school as well. Yeah. Pair, one pair, a pair of leather and a pair of vinyl. All right, here we go. All right, what time is it? Are we done? Are we done with this live stream? We have... It's 10 54. We have six minutes left. All right, who's in the chat? I'm not even in the chat anymore. Like, what is going on on my phone? <laughs> Britt sent us a link. A messenger with leather breeches. Okay. 
leather breeches. I just can't. A uh, virtual zookeeper, all the breeches I want are over uh, over a hundred dollars. Joanna, go to Stateline Tack or ChickSaddlery.com. Sometimes you can get really good deals, like fifty percent or more off on really good kind of breeches. Okay, those are cute though. Are those actual leather or are those fake leather I like English boots? Pu leather is that uh, leather like? Yeah, leather like. Hold on. And they're only $90. Kind of That's crazy. They have them in brown and black. Now, the thing I've noticed, like, I did a video on low-end breeches versus mid-priced mid breeches and actually came to the conclusion that it is worth the few extra dollars to spend on a mid-priced brand. So, Joanna, don't be afraid to spend $100 on a pair of breeches, especially if you find them on sale and they're actually like a $150 pair of breeches yeah. because I have discovered that as you go up in price, it does matter. The seams are stitched more sturdily. Yeah. The and fabric is more sturdy. Yes, when you're riding horses every day, you need those seams to stay in place. You need that fabric to hold its shape. Cheap stretch fabric, knit fabric, doesn't hold its shape very well. The more expensive fabrics will go back and hold their shape. Um, it's just, it's worth it. If you don't have the money, spend $20 on some tough riders. But if you have the opportunity to save a couple of extra dollars, go for the yeah. mid-priced breeches. That is my, that's my advice every time. I, I absolutely agree. I've got a pair of like I think twenty dollar breeches, yeah. and the the back seam split. And <laughs> that's I where keep it has like yes. it, and it keeps splitting. <laughs> I've done that too. I've got some. Um, I've got some uh, tough riders in there that I that are waiting to be patched up. You patch them up and you wear them again, and then they just they get models. Want the nice maroon ones? Save up for them. I'm telling you, you won't regret saving up for a nice pair of breeches. I really want a pair of fits. I don't know those. I don't have a pair of those. They're pricey, but they've got, they're like full seat and they've got different. I love full seats. It's, Can yeah. I just say? I am so a full seat girl. I'm spoiled, I guess, but I really like that full seat. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. I have some tough riders. I have some carrots. I have, I have a pair of Dublin breeches that one of our subscribers, um, Rebecca, sent to me. Like, it was the wrong size for her, so she yeah. sent them to me, and they fit me. Um, and they're Dublin breeches. They fit kind of like stretchy jeans. Okay. Um, so they're not, they don't have a lot of give. They really hold in their stomach. So, um, what else do I have? Oh, I have Iridion. That's a good brand. It's a little bit more expensive, but they're pretty durable. Iridion riding tights. I yeah. have those. And pipers. Uh, the pipers have held up. They are not fraying or they're not yeah. wearing in the inner thigh area. They're, nothing is happening there. It's, they're, they still look brand new. Yeah, it's I really like the pipers. Brittany says, I want blue breeches. You look so good in blue, Britt. You really need blue breeches. Joanna, love you guys. Good night. Yes, good night, Joanna. Thank you for showing up today. If you're still seeing this, I love you so much. She says, I might just have to spend $119 on those marine breeches. Is that not relatable? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Brian Neos, now that industrial hemp is legal to grow, expect to see it more often, even in things like hemp denim. That would be cool to have some, I bet the hemp, I bet hemp riding tights would last a long time. Yeah, definitely. I would guess that. That would be, yes. Hemp denim. I knew what you meant. <laughs> denim. All right, here we go. I'm having another sip of wine. So, yes, gosh, the last 10 minutes, sir. So, we've just been talking about breaches. Not britches. Breaches. I know that's how it's supposed to be pronounced, but every time I hear it like that, I'm like, no, that's wrong. <laughs> Didn't we look it up live one time? Yeah, well, I looked it up because oh, I was like, that's so wrong. It's not pronounced britches. And I looked it up and it is pronounced britches. And I was like, okay, so the dictionary's wrong. <laughs> I was mad at the dictionary. I was mad at the online dictionary. But I've never heard it called that except for Heels Down, Bottoms Up. You guys, um, if go check out the YouTube channel, Heels Down, Bottoms Up. Um, 
the he's shown up in our chats a couple times. Mike does like online equestrian rants. Not safe for work. We do yeah, not safe for work. We do drunken live streams. That's how we roll. Actually, you're not drunken tonight though. But that doesn't happen every night. Why does my phone keep going off? Why won't it stay in the chat? There's a breach in the wall. Probably make him. I mean, you know what? Uh, somebody said something about. Uh, was it fun size equestrian about making um, hemp riding tights? They do have bamboo riding tights. Have you seen those? I think I've got a pair. Liam had a pair of those. They were like a brown pair, and they were really soft. Yeah. They were completely soft, and I was like, oh, I love them. So if you see bamboo breeches, absolutely get those. Ask my horse where all my money goes. Oh, my gosh. Fun sec is the question. He would be like, yes, it is breeches. He would be, wouldn't he? <laughs> he would make fun of us. All right, y'all. It is 11 o'clock. I've got my boots oiled, my actual boots oiled. My wish boots have been cleaned. And we've talked about lessons. Um, TL... Oh, TLDR, you need lessons. If you're watching this right now, you need lessons. Everybody needs lessons. Even Olympic performers need lessons. I've had two and a half glasses of wine. I love you all. Thank you for everyone who showed up in the chat tonight. And thank you to Adriana, who didn't even realize there was a tech chat tonight. She thought it was the extra live stream, and she was like, Oh, shoot. Do I have to come to your house tonight? So thank you. If you want your own extra equestrians uh, t-shirt, click the link in the description box below. Thank you to everyone who showed up tonight. And next week will be our extra live stream. And I'm not sure at this point what it's going to be. It's either going to be my tour of downtown Savannah or it's going to be a tarot card reading. So leave your vote if you would like to have like a tarot card reading just for fun, like nothing serious for fun. Um, or if you want to see my historic tour of downtown Savannah, I'll leave a comment below and let me know. Thank you guys. Thank you for coming over. Oops. Thank you. And thank you guys for showing up. I love you guys. And bye. <gasps>